Hello everybody, so as promised, we have Lynn with us right here on Switch Radio. Lead is a campaigner for the Daniel Bird Foundation, which also gives you access to bleed control kits and bleed control cabinets here in the West Midlands. Hello Lynn. Hello Sophie. Thank you for joining us on Switch Radio, Lynn. Thank you. Can you, can you let the listeners know a little bit more about the bleed control kits? Thank you. Our public access bleed control kits are designed for use in the event of an injury causing a catastrophic bleed and contain exactly the same contents as an ambulance would. As your commonly found first aid kit and other promoted bleed kits do not have the, have the necessary equipment to actually stop the source of bleeding, our kits can be used by absolutely anyone without the need for training or medical knowledge and will give the injured person a strong fighting chance during their wait for the ambulance to arrive, as it only takes several minutes for a catastrophic bleed to kill. And our kits have been popular with first responders, such as police officers and security officers, and business premises that are open to the public, who have bought them directly via our website. And with the donations we receive, we donate back into our communities by installing our kits into areas where we can help save more lives. So when did you first establish the Daniel Baird Foundation and the Bleed Control Kits slash Cabinets? Well, we originally started, founded the charity in, in 2017, although we didn't, we weren't registered until 2019. Um, and it was after the unfortunate death of uh, my son Daniel that year. He was uh, tragically killed on a night out in Digbeth with his friends when some other men started a fight outside and one of the men used a knife. Daniel suffered a catastrophic bleed in the street due to the knife wound and there wasn't any suitable medical kit nearby that could have been used to stem, stem the bleeding. Sadly, Daniel passed away while he was in, at the hospital, but it was due to blood loss and they couldn't stop the bleeding on the way there and we lost him there and then but not just because of the attack but because no one had access to suitable equipment and first aid kits do not have the equipment to treat severe wounds after that i couldn't accept that in this day and age there wasn't access to basic medical kit to treat severe injuries especially in a major city so i started to do my research into what medical equipment the military and ambulance service use and how that could be adapted for use by the public. I consulted directly with the manufacturers of equipment used by paramedics and army medics and with support from Midlands Am West Midlands Ambulance Service, I developed the uh, public access bleed control kit later that year. Oh wow, so it started from a very, very sad incident to you thinking, you know what, something actually needs to change. So when, how do the kits actually work? Can you let us all know how these kits technically work if someone was to use it? Yeah, well, they're, they're surprisingly simple, really, and are designed to be used by absolutely anyone. It doesn't matter if you've had no medical training at all, as the contents have instructional pictures on the packaging so you know what to use for which injury. We have also put guidance leaflets inside the kits which are easy to read under stress as they show a simple diagram of what items are best for what part of the human body. We minimise written instructions as much as possible to reduce stress on the user. Most people would already be on the phone to 999 and speaking with the ambulance service operator who will also guide you in using the equipment so the user has full support throughout the event. We have our, our public access bleed control kits registered with West Midlands Ambulance Service as a local resource. So when someone speaks with the operator, they will be guided to the nearest kit, which may be inside an open premises or one of our cabinets. And again, the operator will stay on the phone and guide you through getting a nearby kit and how to use it on the injured person. It's foolproof really and works in a similar way to defibrillators. Oh, that's really good. So someone just needs to call up and basically like, get instructions. That is, mm -hmm. I think that's, as you say, it's really resourceful and it's really efficient if someone is in that situation. So what are your main aims and objectives for these kits and the cabinets going forward? 
We want to prevent unnecessary deaths. Catastrophic bleeds are more common than you think, particularly with accidents, road accidents, workplace injuries. Even with the ambulance on its way, it can take up to eight minutes for, for it to arrive on national average. Meanwhile, a severe bleed can be fatal in just a few minutes. First aid kits are everywhere by law now, but they don't meet the criteria for injuries that we see in reality. I don't want parents such as myself to have to experience the trauma of losing their child, knowing that they could have been saved had there been a suitable kit nearby. We want to see our public access bleed control kits as common as defibrillators, which we see everywhere, and everyone knows how simple they are to use. How many kits have you launched so far? Well, we're going into the thousands now. Uh, we started in Birmingham City Centre at first and expanded throughout Birmingham, eventually across the West Midlands and even into central London. We have around, oh, possibly well over four, five, five hundred, probably six hundred in the West Midlands alone. And that's our, our public access bleed control kits. They're out there now and in, in the premises and cabinet. Oh, wow. So what some of... What, where are some of the premises where we can find some of these bleed control kits currently? Uh, they're in um, the nighttime economy, uh, pubs, bars, clubs in town. Uh, they're also in, into shops and schools. They're, they're, they're in most places. There's a huge uh, location system. That's amazing, yeah. It's amazing that there's so many of them currently out there. So in 2020, you also launched the bleed control cabinet. How do people access these? Right, yes. That During the uh, lockdown restrictions, we discovered that many of our public access bleed control kits were unavailable for the public to get to due to business closures. So we had to develop a new concept to keep our kits accessible. So we decided to reveal our uh, emergency bleed control cabinet product, which can be accessed 24-7 from the street, avoiding any obstructions. How it works is that when you ring the ambulance service on 999, the operator will direct you to the nearest kit anyway. But if you are near a cabinet, with or without knowing, they will direct you and give you a code to open it to get the kit inside, which is more or less exactly the same as accessing a defibrillator. You have to call the ambulance so that you are getting the kit. The ambulance is always on the way, on its way. This saves valuable time, and again, the operator will guide you over the phone. That's that's really good. That is, so you just phone nine nine nine. They'll tell you where it is, how you yeah. work them, and how you access them. That's right. Yeah. And it's coded as well, isn't it? Yes, there's a code, and it's the same code as defibrillators in the West Midlands. Oh, wow. So, knife crime is obviously rapidly increasing within society. What do you think some of the leading factors of this are? Right, well, violent crime is very complex. The roots are very deep into personal problems. We all experience at some point, from parenting, education, family life, friends, media influence, and culture. Early intervention is extremely important to stop our children from growing into a life of negative influence and crime. Parents and teachers play the most important part of this, and sometimes we forget that. You know, our, some parents are struggling to manage and rely on schools for support. And on the flip side, some schools struggle for parent cooperation or to support their students in the way they really want to. There is no single answer for why we have more violent crime in our society, but we all need to accept. We are all responsible and need to work together to stop our children from feeling that this is the only path for them. I think that's a very good answer. I think, you know, it's down to school, down to parents, down to friends, it's down to everybody. Um, so you have recently won the Pride of Britain Award. Massive well done and massively well deserved, Lynn. How do you feel about it and what did it mean to you to win such a big award? Well, it's always nice to be recognised. But to me, you know, I'm, I'm not too bothered about awards at all. You know, the best award for me is to save lives. Yeah. And you won a Diamond Award as well, didn't you? Yes, I won the uh, Police and Crime Commissioner's uh, Diamond Award, which is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I think it's amazing, as you say, you know, your main 
award and reward is to save somebody's lives and the fact that you've been recognised for that. Um, well, thank you, Lynn, for that interview. Where can people find out more information regarding the bleed control kits? Um, we've got a website, which is um, www.controlthebleed.org.uk and that will give you more information about our work and what we do. And would people just donate directly to the charity if they wanted to say access it to launch bleed control kits or bleed control cabinets around their area or within their businesses? Yes, there's a, a donate a pal, pay, PayPal donate mm. button on the website and we're always happy to have donations because we just use them straight away. Yeah, and it's for the greater good, isn't it? Them donations go straight into cabinets and kits which essentially save people's lives. Yeah, absolutely. You know, everything, everything we get goes straight back out, which yeah. is what we've done recently with our recent launches. Yeah, oh. wonderful. Thank you very much for coming on, Lynn. You can find Lynn's interview on our...